Hi everyone, and welcome to Tap Into Your Creativity. Um, Krista Harris is going to interview me today, and I'm bringing her in. Oops. Oh, there she is. <laughs> hey, it worked. It's a miracle. It, it worked. So, um, so today is a real treat for me and for Krista. We are turning the tables and I'm going to give the mic to Krista and I'm not even going to say welcome, Krista. <laughs> <laughs> well, I'll say that. Welcome, Sandra, which you said to so many of us over the last couple of years. And um, I am thrilled that I sort of nominated myself to interview you <laughs> during a conversation that you and I were having um, because I realized that um, you have created something amazing and you have a story to tell. And I really wanted uh, you to share that with me and with uh, all the other people who follow you and have um, benefited from your journey of tap into your creativity. So um, thanks for letting me do this, for trusting me to do this. Oh, I, um, I wouldn't have it any other way, Krista. Thank you <laughs> for, for suggesting to do this. Seriously, thank you so much. Well, you're most welcome. So um, I wanted to start a little bit with your background and your journey from Mexico to Minneapolis, which is a pretty uh, interesting story in itself. So I'd like to know more about how you came to art and your uh, education and how you ended up where you are. Well, um, it's a loaded question. Um, I <laughs> was born and raised in Mexico City. Um, my grandparents immigrated from Europe and they tried to come through Ellis Island. Ellis Island was closed. So then their ships ended up in Veracruz in Mexico. Oh, and wow. uh, and uh, slowly but surely, uh, you know, my grandfather didn't speak the language and um, he was a peddler on the street as many immigrants were, uh, but Mexico really opened their doors and uh, embraced uh, this wave of um, immigrants. And um, in my case, uh, my grandparents came from Russia and Poland, and then they emigrated into the big city. So my mother was born in Guadalajara, and then my father was born in Mexico City. And um, then somehow my mom ended up in Mexico City, and that's where I was born. And, um, you know, from a very young age, I was um, really uh, attracted to art and architecture because my father is an architect and a developer. So I always saw him drawing, and um, I always, you know, it's, it's funny how you have those images in your, in your head. And I always remember my dad even in a restaurant, he would always be um, literally drawing floor plans on napkins <laughs> and helping others just like in one second. Problem solving um, was something that he had it, um, in, in him. And so he could solve problems right away. And um, mm -hmm. my mom would travel with him um, and help him on the design world. And so I was always very attracted to um, you know, architecture, art, um, anything that had to do with, with going outside the box, because they always push ourselves to, to be our very best that we could be. So I didn't really know that I was going to take this path so seriously until I graduated from high school. And I decided to live abroad in Florence, Italy for six months. And my love of art started really there. I studied under uh, an incredible maestro underneath a church. And he only had like 13 students. And each student had a different, different um, environment. And it was, you know, he had the classical music going and <laughs> cheese and crackers for all the students <laughs> and wine. And I mean, it was like... <laughs> heavenly really heavenly for me and so I that's where I started like drawing 101 and I decided you know maybe this is something that that I that I can do and 
fast forward, I went back to Mexico City, <coughs> got married, and started a whole different career then. <laughs> I was in business administration. And, um, and then my husband was accepted to do a residency at the University of Minnesota. And so I was very young. I was only 20 years old when I got married. Oh, my gosh. <laughs> and I was in the middle of my, um, my career at that point at the university in Mexico. So when we moved to Minneapolis, I said, I, can't, I have to do something that makes me happy because I don't know anyone here. I don't know the culture. I don't know the language. I, I mean, I, do, I did know the language because my grandma, I have one grandmother who passed away, but she was born in Alabama. <laughs> believe it or not, <laughs> and married my Polish grandfather in Guadalajara. <laughs> so they spoke uh, English, so we had English, so we were bilingual in Mexico. So when we moved here, um, I had the language, but not enough to where I could go to school and start writing essays of Henrik Ibsen. And I didn't even, I couldn't even understand <laughs> one word that Henry Gibson was having to say in English. Uh -huh. So it was quite challenging. But then I switched to fine arts at that time. Wow, that's quite, <laughs> that's quite a journey. And so you were, you didn't switch to fine arts until you were in um, Minneapolis? Correct. So um, and how did that the, come about? Yeah. Yeah. So uh, we moved in the summer, so we didn't know what was expecting, um, meaning the weather here in Minneapolis. <laughs> I think if I would have come in the middle of winter, yeah. I would have like, packed my bags and left. <laughs> so um, I just knew that I had to do something that made me happy because my husband was going to be a resident and he's going, he was going to be just crazy busy. And um, so I wanted to do something that, that I knew that I could be good at. And I had the experience in Florence. So I thought, you know, maybe fine art would be, would be a place where I could be. And so I applied at that time to the Minneapolis College of Art and Design. And it is an incredible school here in Minneapolis. And it's really well known nationwide and now worldwide. It's incredible how much it has um, grown. But I decided to do furniture design and fine art. Um, thinking I could go maybe into the industrial side of design. Um, but then quickly I realized that that was not going to be my path. <laughs> so I, yeah. yeah, that's pretty typical. I think for a lot of people, they start down one path. And it's certainly been my experience that once you've, once fine art has sunk its teeth into you, you know, nothing else, nothing else will satisfy that. So so that's a but pretty... it, was, it was hard because my husband was, a, you know, was out all the time working and here I am getting a degree where I'm not going to get a job. And so, <laughs> so uh, we had the support of my parents at that time, thank God. But I decided to then start teaching art um, in school. So um, at the same time, you know, as I was graduating, I was, I went back to school for drafting because I thought if I can draft, I can work for an interior designer or an architect. And that's exactly what I did wow. uh, during the day. I would draft for an interior designer who was an incredible lady and, and opened her, her whole heart to me. And I learned so much from her and from the trade. And then um, in the afternoons, I would teach um, uh, art to children. Mm -hmm. And so that, that happened until... I got pregnant with my first daughter. I remember still bringing her to school um, where I was teaching uh, the first eight months of her life. She was mm. in her little, you know, chair. She was great. And, you know, yeah. all the kids love me, love that I brought her with me, you know? Yeah. I, you know, I knew, how many children do you have? I have two. You I have, have a, a girl and a boy. And a yeah. Yes. Yes. I, I was kind of curious about, there's a lot of talk these days about parenting and how it affects uh, your career as an artist, expectations upon yourself and how the outside world views that. So what was your experience having children and working and creating? Well, I really had to balance it out because my husband was so absent that someone needed to be present 
for the kids. Mm -hmm. And so mm -hmm. um, until they were at an age where I could drop him off in kindergarten or, you know, wherever the t or elementary school, then I would take those hours and, and, and work. And my, first I started working um, in my house. I remember when I was pregnant, my uh, dining room table was filled with paints and I would do, I was selling at that time just uh, paintings for babies' rooms because that was yeah. my world, right? So, yeah, right. Uh, <laughs> so, so I was doing that, and um, and then it was not until 2005, I believe, that I found myself a space. I found uh, a teacher in town that was really my turning point for me. That I started to take classes um, at a much um, advanced level and where I started to take myself more seriously as an artist mm -hmm. because I think in the beginning when you are saying that you want to be a professional artist or that you are a, an artist it's very hard to be val validated mm -hmm. yeah um, as such and it just took a lot of years for me um, yeah you know of trial and error and just keep doing what I was doing and never giving up and showing up in my studio and working hard um, until, you know, someone said yes, but yeah, you know, it's, it's not easy. Let's put it that no, way. It's not easy. It's not easy, especially when you have young children and you're, you know, balancing all of that. But, uh, it's uh, as you were relaying all this information, I'm thinking, so this is how she got all those life skills to push forward <laughs> and to come up with an idea and to just keep going and just latch onto something and run with it, which is, you know, certainly something that's, uh, served you well and has led to the tap into your creativity. But um, yeah, and I also it, think that, you know, my roots and, and coming from Mexico and embracing them and being proud of who I am and where I come from um, mm -hmm. and, and working triple hard, um, right. you know, has also given me the courage to do what I'm doing. Yeah. If yeah, that makes a pretty, sense. Yeah, absolutely. I mean, it, what do you think? So, this is a question people like you ask me sometimes, but what do you think your strongest, like your superpower, what, what do you think the strongest skill is or skill set that you have as an artist that has served you all these years and sort of continue to drive you? I think not being afraid and yeah. going for it and, yeah. um, and making mistakes and learning from them. And um, you know, when I'm down, how I, can get up from those mistakes and then going back and say, Oh yeah, I did that. So maybe this will help me for the future. So mm -hmm. I'm not perfect. I've never seen myself as a perfect person and I work really hard on myself on always mm -hmm. being better. Um, but I think the most important thing for me would be to say, uh, I'm not afraid. Yeah. Yeah. Perseverance, I think goes a long way, you know, in the mix, but uh, yeah, they, that's really interesting. And then, so you're in a studio now in Minneapolis. I've seen pictures of it and it's an independent building. Tell me a little bit about your studio space. So I found this studio. So the first time I, I decided to grab a studio and for people who are hesitating to get a space, um, mm -hmm. I would highly suggest getting your space. There's nothing like mm -hmm. separating home from your studio work. Even if you're at home, make your space a sacred space for you to go in. And mm, then good that will help. Yeah, I think that will help you um, in, your, in your practice. Um, I found myself in a building that was called the Keg House in 2005, I believe. And I stayed there for like three years. And then I moved to this building, it's called the Casket Arts Building. And there's about a hundred or so um, artists in this wow. building. And um, Northeast has become the, so they call it the little Soho of Minneapolis. <laughs> so there's plenty of buildings that are for artists and, um, it, the spaces are incredible. They wow. used to actually make caskets in the 1800s in this building. And, <laughs> I wondered about um, that. <laughs> yeah, that's why that they kept the name. Um, and, um, and at some point, I think there was still someone still making beautiful caskets here, but I don't wow. think that, that that is anymore. But, um, 
but the community of, of having, you know, people around you and, and um, it just, it feels really nice. I, I was part of a collective in 2005 as well. Mm -hmm. And um, I think it's important for you to find people that have the same thoughts, the same mm -hmm. dreams, the same ideas, the same conversations, because you can have great friends, but if you don't have that comp the same language in, right. in, in painting, it's hard to relate. So finding that community of people is so important. Yeah, I absolutely agree with that. And, and I'm sort of envious, you know, I'm, I'm, sort of relating your situation to some friends of mine and yours at, at the ICB studios in California that have a similar setup and um, that have that sort of camaraderie and that, you know, I envision artists sort of wandering the halls at all hours of the night, sort of like when we were in college, you know, there was always right. somebody in some studio <laughs> somewhere um, because it is important. And I think to have some um, support and, right. uh, but in, at the same time, it's a little bit like what you've done on a virtual level with Tap Into Your Creativity. You sort of created this community and this connection of artists, too. So Yes, yes, uh, yes. And, yeah. um, and what can I tell you? What I can tell you is that being in a space um, here and having, you know, the freedom to create and to do things also has taken me to different places and to be um, obviously validated, not only validated as an artist, um, but it gives me the freedom to also use my space as a gallery space. So mm -hmm. I can yeah. sell my things from here um, right. without, you know, paying a cut to a gallery per se. Mm -hmm. um, mm -hmm. And so that was, you know, that, that is something that I don't take it for granted. I think it's yep. a really great thing. And um, also, I had the opportunity to, there was an open call for artists um, when the U.S. Bank Stadium for the Vikings um, team was being built. Mm -hmm. And so I submitted my stuff and I'm like, I'll submit my stuff. I mean, I'm an abstract, <laughs> abstract contemporary artist, right? Yeah. And, right. Um, you know, it was awesome. They selected my stuff. And so I did really large pieces. And if I wouldn't have this studio to work on, I literally right. lived on a ladder for months. <laughs> <laughs> because they're really big pieces and um, they're, you know, they're scattered around the, the, um, the stadium and then also at their facility. Um, so it's been, you know, to be now part of the community of Minnesota and it feels like I, you know, now I'm really part of, of my roots are also here, you know? Yeah. So do you have those, I think somewhere along the line, I saw, one or more of those images of those giant paintings that you did. And do you have those on your site, on your Instagram site, or maybe, maybe after the interview, you can post them. And so people yeah, can I'll connect with them. those because they're pretty them. It's impressive. It's been a long time. <laughs> it's been yeah. a long time since I posted. So I'll post that yeah. for sure. You'd have to scroll through a lot to find them. So yeah, repost those. I think, you know, everybody would like to see those. Um, so you're in your studio now and, um, I know people that are watching would love to see your studio since we're talking about it and see a little more of your work. And um, so would I. So if you wouldn't mind yes, kind of, of course. giving us a Just, tour of your studio. Yeah. Yes. Um, one more thing I want to say is um, before I take you on the, on the tour is um, always learning and putting yourself out there and doing residencies and meeting people like you and Steve Amony and Nicholas Wilton and so many incredible um, teachers out there, reach out, you know, reach out to you, reach out to, you know, all the incredible artists that are out there that are, um, you know, willing to teach you and, and immerse yourself in, in that because if you don't keep learning, you will stay mediocre. And so I, I highly recommend that. Yeah, I think it is really important. Well, thanks for including me in that, um, that group of uh, Steve Imony and Nicholas Wilton group. That's a pretty high level of functioning wow. uh, instructors. But I do think that it's really, really important to connect.
that's one of the most important things that you can do. So. Okay, so I'm going to take this off. And I'm going to take you from the very beginning or the <laughs> where the studio starts. So you can see. Okay. Tell us how large your studio is, too. I so you're going to see um, it's uh, about 1,200. I share it with, um, with a, another incredible artist. Um, she's a, uh, she oh, does so ceramics. Clean. And mm -hmm. so, well, it's, you'll see it's not that clean. But um, so here's <laughs> where you walk in. I created this wall, which um, it's on wheels. Everything that I have is on wheels. Because oh, when we have shows, that's a cool idea. yeah, I can switch things around and I don't have to carry anything. And so it's, I'm sorry, it's super messy, but that's what a studio life looks like. So I added this little niche in here so I can yeah. um, store paintings, which, and it also, I don't know if you can tell, but at the very end of that, it has a shelf. So uh -huh. I can even put more stuff in there, oh, you can and double it makes it, up, it yeah. yeah, and it makes it super clean and 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 uh, and nice. Um, so that's I a have great this, idea. Yeah, yeah. So I have. Um, I'll just show you kind of the overall, and then we can certainly come back. Um, oh. This is um, a great instrument <laughs> for my studio. We love having albums and, and play it here. It's oh. so fun. Oh, my gosh. Um, so you're playing vinyl, in other words. Yeah, yeah. That's great. I'm a retro kind of girl, but I like <laughs> it all. Um, yeah. So you can see here um, wow. that the, it's, it's a pretty large um, studio. So this part here is where my studio mate, Debbie Wolk, um, uh -huh. she does incredible ceramics. This is her side. And then um, the chaotic and messy side is, is my side. It looks um, great. I do have an inspirational wall um, that it keeps changing. Um, so I keep adding and subtracting stuff um, depending on the color palette that I'm working on or the mood mm -hmm. that I'm in. Now that it's winter, I try to bring a lot of color <laughs> in here. Yeah, I know and that. So, really. yeah. So, you know, I have a little bit of Mexico. I have a little bit of um, Tina Turner because I love how, you know, powerful and incredible human being she, she is. And yeah. um, I have brushes that have been given to me as gifts. And so just, you know, I think I highly recommend you having something that you can bounce your ideas from. Mm -hmm. um, because I think it's important to, um, just to, to remind yourself, you know, to, to bounce ideas. And then I have this really, um, nice, um, saying that I read it sometimes great things happen in times of adversity, adversity. Um, and that is when things are invented, discover and breakthroughs occur. And I think yeah. that for me, you know, when that happened, when COVID happened, I, you know, look back and, and, uh, and I think you even said that as well. Um, and here is someone that I love and I learned to love even more through you, Krista, is Enrique Martinez. Mm -hmm. um, you know, and he says, the work of an artist unfollows the experience of wrestling with the moment. So yeah. <laughs> I think I yeah. have to remember, remind myself that I, I wrestle with the moment. Um, so here are some, um, paintings that I do. I use acrylic and also, um, mark making tools. Mm -hmm. So I do use charcoal and, um, pencil and I use my fingers too. So you can see, you know, how sometimes I just like to really truthfully, um, get your hands in very, it. very physical. Yeah. Mm -hmm. Very physical. Mm -hmm. Um, I'm so bummed because I left this open and this dried up. Oh, <laughs> I know. <laughs> I know, right? <laughs> we can all relate to that. Yeah. So right now I'm trying um, with Nancy Hillies, actually. She, mm -hmm. she does a lot of the six panels. Um, and I was trying to do limited palette, but then, okay, I went crazy on them. And so um, Are I'm those in the middle paper? Of, these are on paper, uh -huh. and I just literally just put this uh, blue tape 
on them. Um, Mm -hmm. there's, they're very rich and, um, the, you know, the, the paint is just, I'm adding and adding more. So, Mm -hmm. and I'm even thinking I'm going to, you know, cut them, um, Mm -hmm. and just keep whatever is working. Um, and I'm just not even thinking of what's happening at the moment because Mm -hmm. I don't want to be concerned. And so the same heat, same here, you know, I'm just kind of do some black and white ones. Yep. Yep. Just kind of just having fun, you know, and yeah, go ahead. And you did, um, that just reminded me that you recently did a residency and you were producing a lot of monoprints and, um, so so I was really curious about that. Yeah. Yeah. So, um, this, this is, again, it's, um, acrylic um big brush strokes Mm. and um just you know having fun and (laughs) it has a lot of movement and energy and I like using all different brushes so you can create that yeah and then you know of course my long horns (laughs) yeah I tell why don't you talk about that a little bit because I've seen some of those and they're they're really fabulous so companion pieces yeah yeah so my Longhorns, um, there are 36 families in Mexico, in Baja, that collect them in the fields. So there's mm. natural death. And um, they, they say, they, they are from the Zapotec people. And they yeah. say that once you find them, if you find an artist that intervenes them, then the people that gets them gets good energy, health, power it Mm -hmm. it it just brings all these good things and so when I heard about that story I'm like Mm. wow I would love to be the artist who intervenes and to bring you know good fortunes you know to people how long have you been doing those um those started in like 2019 I think Uh oh so recently yeah yeah Yeah. they're they're fantastic so this is kind of more like the fine art now I'm gonna go into the um, the fun part. <laughs> mm, yeah. I call it the fun part because, um, so this is what I use. I use a gel, um, plate and mm-hmm. oh, they come in two different sizes or three. Um, so I like having both because, um, if you just have, I just use literally cheap paper uh-huh. to do all my trial and arrows and to do all my pools in this. So it's, it's mm-hmm. fabulous. Mm-hmm. And, um, and once you have, you, um, you use open um, mm-hmm. golden paints because they have more life. They, mm-hmm. they, they stay um, wet longer. Yeah. And so you apply it here and you use this, um, oh, sorry, trowel here. I mean, this uh, roller mm-hmm. and then you apply the paint. And then, um, you know, you just, you start creating lots of different, papers yeah and I have thousands of thousands of papers that I have created and then I start literally cutting them right and just saying okay I like this for example Uh let's say Uh I like that so um then I call this my visual sentences and um um Jane taught me this and and it's literally making a collage pretty much of all your monoprints and mm-hmm, what speaks mm-hmm. to you and what mm-hmm. doesn't speak to you. And mm-hmm. so this is, these are some of mine that I've created. Wow, that, they're so dynamic. Yeah, I think they're just so different than my fine art, you know? Yeah, and, they say more, uh, well, they're very colorful, which I think is part of your heritage. They're very graphic. Um, I think they probably satisfy a different part of your creative process. I mean, that's the way I always feel when I'm working on paper, that it sort of allows me to approach things with a slightly different mindset and with different expectations and be open to sort of, look at that. That's the one that you donated, isn't it? Look at that fantastic Yes, I love it. So um, we donated, I donated this piece and guess what, it sold. So I'm super excited because we made I money for surprised. Feeding America. Yeah. And so um, I'm willing to sell another one 
So if you are interested, I will give you a choice. For, um, I can give you this one. Mm -hmm. or so you're going to put that one. So I will put okay. them up. Great. And if you guys are interested, please DM me and I will let you know what you have to do. You just go to Feeding America and make the donation. And remember that 100% of the proceeds go to Feeding America. Yeah, that, that's fantastic. And what, it's really generous on your part to, you know, offer up the second one. Um, and um, look at the look at the colors on those. How do you think, how do you feel about the differences between this and your painting? Sorry. So these are on wood panels, uh -huh. and um, I really enjoy working on, on the wood panel. Um, you can literally scrape into them. Um, right. I collage um, a, a ton of stuff. Um, I don't know if you can tell, but there's yeah. paper here. And um, so the way that the wood um, works versus paper versus canvas um, you know, it's just so different. And so, mm -hmm. you know, that's why it's so important for you to try what's, you know, your best, um, what you like to work on best. I like working on all of them. Yeah. This is another thing that I love to you use. Try. Yeah. Yeah. Um, I love to use it on big scale and in small scale, um, because I can just literally just, you know, smear the paint really yeah. easy. Yeah. Um, were you doing these in your residency? Uh, were you doing these monoprints in the residency? You yes, did? I was. Yeah, yes, that's what I was, I was. thinking. Yeah. Mm -hmm. Yes. Yes. Had, but had and you done those before, though? Before no, never. Residency? Never. You just started. I just oh, went crazy fantastic. on them. <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> I like literally. They showed me how to do it, and it was Jane Davis, and she's unbelievable. She's an incredible oh. artist. Yeah. And we were. Up north in 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 uh, the East Coast, and it uh -huh. was an incredible residency, and I learned so much from from her. And then I just decided to keep going, and yeah. you know, and even um, these guys, you know, like just more subdued. Um, but well, you know, they they're path. just you know, I I like I like both. I like working, you know, on very colorful, but I also, um, you know, like working yeah. on. Yeah. I love the spontaneity of them, you know, and right. Uh, and you don't, you don't think cause you're going you really think. fast, you know, right. you go really fast. It's the one thing I do have oriented. to say is, um, if you don't have these in your studio, go <laughs> run and giant, get them. Are those those giant ones? Yes. Yes. I so know, those six are if great. you can see the size in my hand, um, oh. uh, compared to, um, sorry compared to a regular pin, right? Um, <laughs> Go large. You know, you know, you can see that the size is so different. And I use them to, um, you know, put my canvas to put my plastic, it just yeah. can handle a lot of weight, which is yeah. um, amazing. Yeah, and yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah. <laughs> um, so and I have, well, you know, brushes and more brushes and Mark you know, it's just a great excuse and... to buy more art supplies, too, <laughs> as if we didn't have enough. <laughs> yeah, exactly. <laughs> I and always then, feel um, a little bit like a mad scientist when I'm doing that, which I, I love the whole, the, you know, just 100%. Anything, the sort of Look, anything goes. I even have my, my white coat. Because I, I, I say, because, <laughs> you know, I have uh, two white coats in my family. My, my daughter's going to be a PA. My, my husband is a surgeon. So I'm like, oh, I need my white coat. So I actually have had this coat for since I started. Wow. And it has Starting so much history. Good. And I could never like part ways with it. It has just like, you know, it's, it's, a work it's of almost, art, yeah. I know it's almost like heavy to wear it, but I just love it. Same thing with yeah. my shoes. Just look at my shoes. Yeah. I always love artist shoes because <laughs> I've got mine on right now and they're just covered with <laughs> you know, they're just covered with paint. But, exactly. Um, and one more thing I wanted to show you was um, I created a catalog, and I think that's important for, um, you know, artists to have um, uh -huh. because you can, you can um, send this to galleries. You can give it to your um, clients, um, and it's just important to to have some sort of, um, you know, something printed. I think, don't you think? I do. And have you found a company that you like working with? Who printed those for you? How do you, how do you market so, those or print them? 
So I work with MacLeod and uh -huh. um, it's an incredible company because you can print by demand. And okay. so um, sometimes it's hard to find, you know, um, print on demand. Mm -hmm. And so they are a great company and, and I'll show you another book that I'm working on in a minute. But let me just Do put this back. Do you find okay. that the color reproductions are pretty good? Because I've done some of those earlier on years ago, and I was sort of moderately satisfied with the, the end no, result. No, they – let me get it real quick. Maybe the, um, maybe the process has improved. It's, um, it's kind of like a high um, – like a high-end um, book magazine yeah. kind of – and the um, – literally all the pages are heavy like they don't feel like flimsy or you know you just need to make sure that when you um when you are documenting your work um, right. make sure that you take great pictures mm -hmm. make sure that you have a great system mm -hmm. um i use Airtable, thanks to terry frolic um and it organizes literally everything it's like uh -huh. An Excel sheet on steroids because, you, can, <laughs> <laughs> you know, you can, um, you can make all this tabs and colors and, oh, and, um, and then you, you add all the little icons. So you can just literally drop the um, photograph that you want, the size, the year, the, the media, where it's at. So you know mm -hmm. where it's at. And then you can filter, let's say like you want to see what you did in 2020. So right. you can filter and it will come up as, you know, what, what you're showing on 2020. So I really highly recommend it and it's free. I'll look into that one. Yeah, I, I use a similar thing, I think is a similar thing. It's an online platform called Artwork Archive. And it's, it, you know, helps you manage all your inventory. It gives you uh, economic breakdowns and it tells you yeah. which pieces are where, of course, you've got to still be responsible for entering that information, cataloging right, exactly. it. But it's, a, I mean, exactly. you can access it anywhere at any time, you know, so exactly. if you've got somebody who's inquiring about a piece and, um, you know, you've got your size, your medium, your price, everything's at your fingertips. But I haven't heard of this one, yeah. so I'll look it up. That's, well, this that's is a really just, good it's, tip. It's, it does the same thing, but it's free and it's just, you know, it's, um, if we have time, I have my computer, I can just kind of show you what it looks like. And it's just, yeah. it's, um, it's just a really great place. And I'm all, only until 2010. So I have 12 years to still input. <laughs> <laughs> well, maybe you could post links to both the resource for the Mac cloud uh, book and the Airtable. I think, you know, sh that's one of the fantastic things about uh, tap into your creativity and, you know, any community discussion between artists is those, th those little pieces of information, whether it's a tool or a resource, it's just, yeah. you know, people take those things in and run with it. It's like the thing they've been looking for or they really need. So thanks for sharing that. Um, so, um, yeah, and your studio is fantastic. It's really, it's really a soulful sp space, and and it looks like you know uh, you've inhabited and filled it and with all kinds of really wonderful energy. So it was Thank nice you. to see that. I always Thank like, you. you know, I never, I, I never can really feel like I know somebody until I see where they live and and <laughs> an artist where they work, and then I, in my mind, when I'm thinking about them, I can, you know, I can sort of visualize them in situ in their space and and so then the pictures complete somehow for me so i love being able to see you know where artists work and create i think that's well, I'm really so glad important. i i'm able yeah. to share finally yeah <laughs> yeah i don't know finally so um let's let's move I, so i guess this this is the segue where we move into tap into your creativity because uh when when you first started that the, when you first got the idea, that was the beginning of the pandemic, right? Because the way I remembered or the way I thought about it was that you are one of those people that saw, that turned an obstacle into an opportunity. And you, it is just, it just, it seems to me like it just exploded and became something so powerful and so much larger than yourself. And than you imagined. And I'd love to hear sort of your story about that. Well, um, some people already know the story, but um, so the pandemic hit 
my daughter got engaged literally the weekend before and um we got home and my husband um has a lot of friends in spain and they were about 10 days ahead of us oh with terms the pandemic of, yeah and so he said to me we have to brace ourselves this is this is coming and it's coming. bad mm -hmm. and um and so my son at the time was a freshman at madison wisconsin Yep. And um, he called and he said, you got to come get me. We got to get out of the dorms. So I oh. had, you know, a 19 year old boy that had just left and he was living his life so happily. And then he's home and he's depressed. And, um, and, and then my husband keeps going to work every day. And um, at that time, everyone would call family, friends, what's happening? What do we do? How do we keep ourselves safe? Right. And so I think everybody was a little bit just, you know, the unknown was very hard mm -hmm. and uh, having zero control on the situation was even worse. And right. so I thought I started to just write ideas down and um, I came up with what if I start, because I, I saw actually one of my friends start doing some sort of a live interviews on, on, on Instagram, on bringing in people. And, and I thought, well, what can we do as a community of artists to make a difference? Mm -hmm. And um, so literally I just jumped into the idea. I called my colleagues that know me because at that time I'm thinking, who's gonna give me a shot? And, <laughs> um, <laughs> you know, they don't know me necessarily, or, you know, if I just called, email them, you know, they wouldn't know me. So I literally just called the people that I knew that, that trusted me. Mm -hmm. And I threw myself into the, <laughs> into the unknown, literally. And I started my first interview was with Jane Kenyon. And that was April 4th of 2020. Mm -hmm. And, um, and I, at that time I was doing it Wednesdays and Sundays. And I was mm -hmm. trying to show my son that, you know, that, in the worst times we can still do something good mm -hmm. um and so we started you know in the beginning it was hard i was asking for the donations um to be sent to me and then i was trying to sell them as a collection so i made my life hard <laughs> and uh, <laughs> good at harder that. than it needed to be yeah. and so i what i ended up doing was um switching the formula a little bit and then um you know, I used to have on my tripod all these notes and reading all the notes and my back, I was sweating. I was so nervous on every <laughs> single interview. And then at night, Instagram didn't have at the time the um, where you can record right away and it would stay on your page. I would right. have to decompress the file and then put it up again. And I didn't know how to do that. I'm not a tech person. So I, I, literally went to school on YouTube at nights uh, while I was working during the day. So I had never been busier in my life than those COVID months. Yeah. Well, so it sounded like it was good for you. And did it, did it have that effect on your son? Do you think that he, that he picked up on that or benefited well, from he, that? He, that yeah, he got a job and he was selling knives online. <laughs> <laughs> so, Fantastic. Yeah. Um, so, you know, he was waking up now and, and putting a, a, a nice button down shirt and, uh, and shorts, obviously, but <laughs> nobody would see the shorts, but the button down was there and, yeah. and he, you know, and he made a lot of money and, and, uh, and, and he him. got motivated to like, to do something for himself and yeah. to get out of the funk. And my whole idea was, you know, try and give people at home, one hour of relief, one hour of yeah. not hearing that loud noise and the everything that was happening outside was so scary. And so yeah. I thought if we can just avoid that and for the first time, I think artists open themselves up in a way that maybe they hadn't before mm -hmm. because they were ready to share their inspirations and their process in mm -hmm. ways that I've learned so much, like my head mm. is exploding with all this information. Yeah, so, so that's one of the things that I was curious about was, you know, obviously this has a, a benefit for 
the artist and the bigger community, but I'm also curious about the benefits, the, the benefits and the drawbacks for you, because it's, I'm sure that's, you know, it's taken a lot of your time and, and so you know, I, I would wonder say the, the benefits have been, um, you know, meeting people from all walks of life from all over the world. Um, you know, artists now reach out to me to feature them on, on tap into your creativity. It has been um, humbling to learn so much from each one of you guys and um, that together we are now over $33,000 for Feeding America, um, which amazing. is incredible. And um, so that part has been more than I could ask for. And my heart mm. and soul is beyond full. Um, I would say the downsides, the, the down of it all has been, um, I never expected to work so hard. <laughs> um, and uh, which, is, which is, I'm not complaining because it's something that I wanted to do. And now mm -hmm. I have it under control, so I'm not working so hard. Yeah. Um, the other piece is my own creativity and my own painting has suffered a little bit from it because right. um, I have so many ideas from all of you that I come yeah. into my studio and it's hard to leave that, you know, on one side and just, you know, have Sandra emerge yeah. and be on the other side. Right. So, um I, I have a goal that uh, my daughter is getting married on April 3rd. God willing, please, God, <laughs> third time around. Um, I same will, guy, though, right? Same guy. Yeah, same guy. <laughs> um, that I will be able to create um, and give myself some time and, um, and just let myself be without having the interruptions and the worrisome and the pressure that I put on myself. So you're planning to take a little respite or a little break from it? Is that what you're thinking? So um, tap into your creativity. Uh, we'll take, I will take a little break because of the wedding and okay. I will come back after. Yep. But um, meaning during the week, I will be more organized on giving myself the space to be here, to not be on my phone, to be present to yeah. reconnect with myself. Um, I think sometimes we're overloaded with, you know, social media and what do I have to do next and how do I go about it? And so I need to relax on that side and really connect with myself and my artwork yeah. um, with, with all the information that I have from all of you, if that makes mm -hmm. sense. Yeah, it does make sense. And I hadn't even really considered that because just a little information in your head visual or otherwise when you carry that into your studio it's like you go into your studio with all these people in your studio with you and uh i can't remember who who said this quote but it, it was like you know you go into your studio and you've got all these people and then eventually those people leave and it's just you and your artwork and if you're lucky even you leave you know th th exactly mentally you're not even exactly present. it's just the artwork so yeah so and and, um, you know, tapping to your creativity has evolved and it has grown. And um, now um, I'm almost ready to release the book of artists that have uh, donated a piece and that have participated in this project. And I'll just show you a really quick, quick, quick um, sneak peek. Sneak peek. So this is the book that you've produced of some of the early oh, there you um, are. participants. <laughs> Oh, don't see. keep going. <laughs> uh, I see so many people. Yeah, yeah, there I am. And so did you produce this book with uh, the, what's the purpose behind this book? It so, looks fantastic. Um, yeah, so the purpose of this book is going to be for everyone to know what happened, you know, the first year and a half of COVID and what people were creating and what their experiences was and um, to learn from all the artists, the incredible artists. And so I'm hoping that everyone will help me in purchasing this book. I will have it on um, my LinkedIn bio and I will have it on my website where you are gonna be able to buy it. 
And, and again, some of the proceeds will go to Feeding America, but you will, you know, you will learn so much because I sent you quest, like questions um, to each of the artists. So you really get to know the artists. And, um, and like I said, it's, it's just fun to, to, you know, to see all the yeah. incredible artists that have participated and, and, um, That's you know, fantastic. and it's, and it's just the coffee table book that you can have. So I'm, I'm really hoping for, for your guys' support because um, we need it for sure. And when does that, you're going to post that, but when does that go on sale? I think that, that will be available um, end of February. I'm, I'm hoping end of February will be, will be um, available. Okay. Okay. That so, sounds great. Something to look forward to. That's yeah, fantastic. Exactly. exactly. Another, super... another sideline that you didn't really anticipate, but it, will there be another volume? How many artists do you think you've interviewed during the course so, of... So it's been more than 100 interviews right now. Oh, um, yeah. And literally I've, you know, interviewed from all the way from Australia to Israel to Canada to Mexico and... Wow. Um, you know, and, and, and it's incredible all the different uh, ways of approaching art and how we each have our own um, space, our own story. And, um, mm -hmm. and we can just, I'm all about, you know, lifting each other. And I love lifting other artists and, and putting yeah. them in the spotlight. Because I think that you know, it, it's, it's so awesome to do that. Right. And so it's nice for artists to be validated that way too. I mean, yes. it's very generous, you know, it, it does make I just you feel like that Renda, Renda is in. So Renda, this is your page, honey. <laughs> so <laughs> Hey, Renda. <laughs> what a community. So um, I want to leave a little, we're running out of time so quickly. There's so much to cover and I want to leave some time for um, questions, but I just wanted to ask you really quickly if you had any ideas like where you might go next, are you going to continue with tap into your creativity? Are you going to so, do something different? Um, what... My, my idea, um, and I'm hoping it can um, come through is taking tap into your creativity on the road. So kind of making like a cooking show, but an art show where I can go and find on hidden gems all over and, um, wow. And I think there is nothing in the market like that. And I think that people will be excited to see the process firsthand. So um, if you know of anyone, any production um, people, please send them my way. <laughs> so you would actually travel to, to visit artists and artist studios and do live, you know, in- Correct, in situ. yes. That's fantastic. Yes. Yes. Great yes. idea. That, that will be the my dream come true. So um, wow. I'm I'm hoping and uh, yes, I want to come to New Orleans. I want to you know I want to travel and just come to you Colorado. Know, just, yeah, just yeah, come to Colorado. It's come just everywhere. to be a road trip. Well, that's a <laughs> that's a fan, you know I have no I have no doubt that you'll pull it off once you set your mind to it. But what a great segue into you know the next thing. So that's very cool. I'll look forward to seeing how that works. Okay, so thank you for everything you've shared so far. And uh, let's do some questions. Let's see, you know, if people that are tuned in have specific questions. Um, yeah, I think that, you know, I think that it would be nice um, to know, you know, where are you in your artwork? Are you struggling? Are you, you know, how do you come out of your struggles? I guess that's a good question to ask and see what they, people say. Um, because for me, it, it has been a little hard and, you know, we can't pretend always to be perfect and to be great and to be, you know, what you see is probably, you know, what, what people want to yeah. say that the your good, life is, all the good, yeah, things, all the right? good, yeah. right? When it's but, really high, it but looks it's great. Really, but... it, it, your life as a painter is like this, right? Yeah. I mean, it's, yeah. It's, and that's where the experience comes in because it, you know, a lot of people think it goes like this. It does not, I, it, at least in my experience, when you're up here, you know, you're going to be back down there. And when you're down there, you just have to have faith that you're going to pull yourself up by the bootstraps and keep going. And you know, how you do that is, that's a big question. So if anybody, how do you, how do you do it, Krista? How do you, how do you get out um, of your funk? 
Well, I have, a, <laughs> I have friends that, you know, know me and that when I get to the point where I think, you know, I'll never paint again, I'll never be able to do another, you know, I'm done. I'm going to go get a job at Walmart. Uh, you know, I have friends that say to me that they've seen me here before and they know I'm about to make a change, you know, that, that sort of just signals that I'm, you know, shifting or growing somehow. And so I try to hold on to that. I, you know, and I usually give myself like a day, 24 hours of pity party. And then um, what else am I going to do? I mean, you know, I can't do anything else. <laughs> I just wake up and I just think, well, what else am I? I guess I'm going to go into my studio and paint. And you do kind of just keep going. You just, you just keep going. Yeah, exactly. Yeah. So I'm just yeah. going to go get the, um, the pieces again. So I'm going to show them real quick. Yes. Um, Please do. So in case people want to purchase them. Right. This is a good time to share that. Yes. Um, was this one? Oh, this one. Okay. So you get a choice from yeah, this one. That's a beauty. Yeah. Or this one. Okay. And do those, and so, uh, are you going to just post them and they're going to say which one they'd like or do they have numbers um, $200, or dollars um, for, for, what a bargain. Um, for them. I know I'm, I'm, yeah. but you know what, we are here to, you know, make money yeah. for, for feeding yeah. America. And, um, I'm just so excited about this and, yeah. um, I can't thank you enough. And I think I've, I've, I've said it many times that it's not me, but it's we, and I yeah. really, truly believe in that. Um, I could not do this without my army of artists or my collectors because it's yeah. a win-win situation. I do all the work, but it doesn't matter because I never say I. I always say we. And I, you know, and, and that keeps me going because I know yeah. that we have an incredible community out there. Yeah, I think that's so important. I mean, most of the time as artists, we're, <clears throat> you know, just kind of flailing away in our studios on our own. But in the grand scheme of things, you know, we stand on the shoulders of everyone, you know, every, when, when one person rises, we all rise. And I think that uh, it's important to remember that and to be humble about it and to acknowledge that, that uh, we owe a lot to everyone else in our lives, all that sort of collective creative energy. And um, we just have one question. Um, I'm an emerging artist and looking for a mentor. What is the best way to find mentors? So um, I would say by starting to reach out to teachers out there and building a really solid friendship, um, if you can, because then that converts into being an incredible mentor or finding people within your community that you love what they do, you can certainly approach and ask them. Like I say, mm -hmm. you know, don't be afraid, put yourself out. What there are they going to say? No. If they say no, <laughs> no, move to the next you one. Just, Who cares? Yeah, <laughs> I know. And I think that that's a real, I think that's a really good question. A really good piece of advice just to ask. I mean, and uh, find someone that you really admire and, you know, start at the top and, and ask somebody. Yeah, exactly. Yeah. So I think we're done. I cannot even believe Oh my gosh. It. So again, we, so again, this is one and this will be the second and you get a choice. So hopefully we'll, we'll sell them DM me and um, thank you, Krista. And you're going to so post much. this on YouTube, just like you've done with it. Thank you so much for sharing that. It's just been fascinating for me. And I, I'm so happy to know you and be a part of this community and so anxious to see where you're going to take it. It's just, it's such an inspiration. Oh, thank you so much. The size yeah. is um, 12 by 18, by the way. Sorry. Okay. Um, someone just asked that. Um, Krista, I couldn't thank you enough. You are an incredible <laughs> interviewer. So maybe I'll leave uh, <laughs> tap into your creativity for a minute with you. Yeah. Um, <laughs> and, uh, <laughs> yeah. You can, and, uh, you can you can go to your daughter's wedding. I think that's a great idea. Pass it around. Let some other people do it because yeah, it's I, I nice might, to be in the, change the seat. Yeah. Yes. So stay tuned for the book to come. And, um, 
you know, keep tuning in. We have amazing artists. And uh, so thank you, thank you. And thank you to all for joining us today. It was amazing. Yeah, thanks everyone. Bye. Bye.